The Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus are here. These are Samsung's answer to the iPhone X. They're beautiful phones and they're all about the camera. Both of them do something really novel with a 12 megapixel lens that automatically snaps between two settings. One that's best for low light and one for all your other shots. Also, the S9 Plus has a bonus lens. This is Samsung's second phone to include two cameras on the back so you can take those artistic portrait photos. The S9, on the other hand, sticks to just one camera lens. There's even better slow motion video on here. It captures video at a rate of 960 frames per second. And all that means is that your slow motion videos will stretch time. You know what they say, slow motion is e-motion. Then there's the eight megapixel front facing camera, which in addition to taking selfies, can scan your face to convert it into an animated emoji called AR emoji. This is a clear copy of the iPhone X's Animoji feature. Big differences between the Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus, obviously the size, dual cameras on the back, and the battery for this guy is a little bit bigger. Let's talk about design. From the front, the Galaxy S9 phones look almost identical to last year's Galaxy S8. They're all screen beauties with very slightly slimmer bezels and enormous screen to body ratios. You get a headphone jack, which is a rarity these days, and the return of the button for Samsung's Bixby voice software. You have micro SD card storage and a second speaker, so your music and your audio is gonna sound a lot louder and richer. I'm also loving these bold new colors, lilac purple and coral blue. They're beautiful in person and they give the phones an immediate edge over your basic boring black. But the best change is on the back. Remember how you had to awkwardly stretch your finger across the camera to unlock the Galaxy S8 and Note 8? Samsung has sensibly moved the fingerprint reader to the center of the back panel beneath the camera, and I couldn't be happier. Well, well, maybe I could be a little bit happier if the reader were actually built into the display, like on this Vivo phone. That was one rumor that just didn't pan out for the S9. As for unlocking the phones with your face, you won't get a map of infrared dots like you do with the iPhone X, but there is a new feature called Intelligent Scan. It tries to unlock your phone through an iris scan first, but it automatically falls back on face unlock if the iris scan fails. It's meant for speed and convenience, but Samsung admits that face unlock isn't secure, so I really don't see the point of using face unlock alone or as part of Intelligent Scan. If it were me, I would just stick to the fingerprint reader and the iris scanner. On the inside, the Galaxy S9 phones are the first to use Qualcomm's new Snapdragon 845 chip, which promises a heap of speed, battery life, and security improvements. Plus, the phones bump up external storage support for 400 gigabyte cards. For software, the S9s run on top of Android 8.0 Oreo, so they're all up to date. There's plenty that the S9 and S9 Plus borrow from last year's S8s. Screen size. At 5.8 and 6.2 inches, they've got very high resolution displays. There are three storage options. They vary by region, so you may not have your choice depending on where you live. There are also the same battery capacities as last year's models, but we're hoping that they'll be even more efficient this year for longer battery life. You've got the same water resistance rating at IP68, wireless charging built right in, and support for gigabit 4G LTE when those networks are ready. And now for the million dollar question. Now that we know everything that's in the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus, how do they actually compare to the iPhone X, Google Pixel 2 phones, and others? Well, we don't know yet, but we can't wait to test them out.